is your wake-up call. Have a lucky stay. Good morning. Welcome to the Excalibur. This is your wake-up call. Have a bright it is today. You'll gather from the decor that either, well, there's two possibilities, either you're hallucinating or I'm in Las Vegas. I am in Las Vegas. And I've got a rather sore head because drinking here is compulsory. It goes against my nature, of course. And uh, I spent rather a lot of money last night. It's all so different from that happy day when I touched down in Los Angeles. <laughs> I come to America to make myself a very happy man. I'd appreciated for a long time that beauty comes from Detroit and her name is Cadillac. The journey of a lifetime was about to begin. Mr. Coltrane, uh, welcome to the USA. My name is Bob. And, Thanks, Bob. Uh, nice to have you with us again. Thank you. Uh, well, it's nice to be back, I must uh, say. You're going to so, be with us long? Uh, well, I don't know. A day or two here. I'm trying to find an old... A Cadillac to... I'm going to drive across to New York. Well, so I'll be here as long as it takes, really. Well, then you'll get to see a bit of our country then, all the way across I the I will. Country. I'm really looking forward to that, actually. That sounds interesting. so meticulously tidy because I fold everything carefully. So anyway, there I was in Los Angeles and I'm looking for the car of my dreams basically to drive across the states and I say to people, where will I go for such a car? And they say, one place, Frank Carreni. He's got a very nice place on the strip. You can't miss it. Every kind of Cadillac you ever saw in your life, Frank Carreni. And he's a very nice person and he will persuade you to buy anything he wants to. Is, is the engine rebuilt? Is it smooth? Is it? You know what? My watch makes more noise than that. See, this doesn't meet the Yeah, door well, there. we can adjust that. I mean, you, 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 you got to remember now, the car is what, uh, 39 years old, sure, 40 but years old? See, when those have moved back, it usually means it's had a dent somewhere that shifted no, not it Not necessarily. Sometimes it's just a hood, hood hinge. Because, you know, you open and close these hoods for all these years. You know, you're going to have a little uh, uh, spring there or something. Yeah. You know? uh, I mean, come on, that's not a new car. Well, I'll be honest with you, Frank, it needs an awful lot done to it. Uh, I'll oversee the paint job for you. I'll help you out. I'll, I'll yeah. see that it's done right. All we need is two or three weeks, four weeks. Well, really so what do you think? You want to buy it? Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, Frank. I, we, uh, I'll be honest with you. It's not exactly what I want. But if, if I don't find exactly what I want elsewhere, and it, it probably is, isn't very likely, then I'll come back. Does that seem you fair to you? You've got to keep this in mind. A, lot, will of, a lot of yeah. rust buckets, you've got to get underneath. Of course. Even if you find a car that's been reconditioned, you oh, don't yeah. know what's going to happen in a year from now. Well, well you thanks very much, it. Frank. Thanks okay. for your time. Thank you. And okay. uh, I'll, again. I may well see you again. Okay. God Thank bless you. <laughs> Matching uh, Cadillacs, his and hers. <laughs> the truth of the matter is that it's all a bit hairdressery in here. It's not quite my kind of place. You can't smell paint or oil, and everything's painted basically the color of a tart's handbag. Well, are you interested in this? Well, I am looking for a 50s Cadillac to, you know, I'm driving across to New York. Um, and what I'm looking for really is something that's extremely reliable. Oh, uh, these would be. They're totally, totally gone through, just like buying a, a remanufactured car. I mean, engine transmission, brakes, shocks. Uh, it's like buying a new car. <laughs> oh, a nice, oh, yes, a nice little runabout. I can just see me going to the shops in Cologne in this one. You will be noticed. Uh, what to, so what, what is your asking price for this? 50000 50 Oh, God, this seems an awful lot of money. Well, you know, <laughs> a suggestion I may make, you may consider financing, because they do that on a classic car that doesn't depreciate. So that's something you should really consider. And then you are, are able to buy the car you want, the car you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make you a happy man. Well... <laughs> 
Director's choice of case, by the way. Personally, I would have seen dead with a suitcase that looks like a waffle. But there you go. Well, still no luck. So, then it was off to Ed Shalakins. Great name, that. Sounds like a guy who kind of eats bulldozers with his teeth, doesn't it? Good boy. Good boy, Rover. I found his place in the foothills of the San Gabriel Mountains. It was boiling out there, and it looked like a wasted trip as I meandered through what we cognoscenti call a junkyard. <laughs> oh my God. Ed Shalokian runs a business printing t-shirts because he has to make a living and collects Cadillacs because he likes to live. It turns out he had bought his first in 1978 and now had 170 vintage caddies, the largest private collection in the world. 56. Heaven, I'm in heaven and my heart beats so that I can hardly speak. I'm looking for something where the, the, the hood comes, the roof comes down on, really. Oh, you like a convertible? Easy. Yeah, I do. Everybody else likes a convertible, too, and there's only so many convertibles to yeah. go around. Yeah, uh, that's true. Sounds to me like a price bump to me. Well, come on over here. Let me just show you a little bit of this car. It would have to take a little bit of work, but we could make it come out really pretty nice. It's a little bit and dirty and dusty. Paint underneath that. But let me just show you here. I will, I'll yeah. just peel a little bit of this back. Whoa. Uh, the interior in this is beautiful, too. It's red leather, like it was in 1951. Mm -hmm. How's that look to you? That's beautiful. That's a Fleetwood interior, isn't it? Yes, that's a Fleetwood yeah. interior, uh-huh. There is such a thing as love at first sight. She did look a little grubby and sad, but a quick dicht and she'd be the most beautiful machine imaginable. Well, obviously we were meant to be together, but I had to be cool. How much work's been actually done to it then? Well, uh, I would say uh, the majority of it has been done. There's a few things that need to be done. Well, I mean, if I said, if I said we were going on Wednesday, would you say it'll be ready for Wednesday? I could have it ready by Wednesday, yes. And I mean, ready to drive to New York. Trust me, it'll be ready on Wednesday. I love the looks of you, the lure of you, the sweet of you, the pure of you, the eyes, the arms, the mouth of you, the east, west, north, and the south of you. I'd love to gain. George, loved your picture. Control of you and handle. Louise, you were fabulous. Fabulous. Of you. So love at least a small percent of me do. Maurice, don't worry about dress. Get out of town. the visitors were the Shah of Iran. <laughs> and you're supposed to go up. Now here's an interesting thing. This is a this is a roundabout with no roundabout in it. But uh, I think the technical term is a free for all. But seeing as I'm carrying two and a half tons, I'll just brass neck it. <laughs> On your, on your left here is the Beverly Center. It, it looks like a very carefully sculptured jobby. Uh, but in fact, inside it's incredibly glamorous. It's where all the very girls go shopping at the mall to get their nails done and all their bits and pieces done. And uh, it really is quite weird. They've just brought out a Barbie doll here that says, Will you take me to the mall? And then it says, Math is so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really? Mass. I don't get it. The 
people often say to me, what's Los Angeles really like, Rob? They say, is it really all palm trees and pink flamingos and people in leather shorts and people saying, let's do lunch? Or is it, as a lot of people suspect, actually full of a lot of illegal immigrants working for next to nothing, who are deeply discontented? And the answer is, of course, that it's both. the owner of a 51 Series 62 Cadillac Coupe Convertible. On a three and a half thousand mile journey, I'd dreamt of making since I was six. I had my sunglasses, clean underpants on, and we were headed for home, via the heartland of America, the Atlantic Ocean, and the A81 Sterling Road. First, heading through the burning Mojave Desert of California towards the capital of polyester decadence, Las Vegas. Modern Las Vegas was really created when Bugsy Siegel built the Flamingo Hotel in 46. Sadly, his employers did not let him live to witness the astonishing boom he triggered. Now, 22 million people come here every year and spend $10 billion in the pursuit of pleasure. Okay, sir? Yeah, that's right. I'm in uh, 6259. 6259, yes, sir. You follow me, sir? I'll take you right there. Okay. Right. Your first time to Las Vegas? It is indeed, yes. All right. On behalf of the Excalibur Hotel and Casino, I'd like to welcome you to the world's largest hotel. This is the biggest in the world. 4,032 rooms. Yeah. Over uh, 3,000 slot machines. Yeah. 100,000 square foot of casino Good area. God. So how many people, how many people can actually gamble here at one time then? Millions, sir. Millions. Almost about as many employees. We have 1.276 employees per room. So do you, do you have to take the bags right through the, the gambling area to get to the rooms? Yes, sir. Do you think that's quite deliberate? A bit of psychology there, so... <laughs> so you'll spend all your money on it's the It's certainly way, working sir. with me. I'm itching to have a wee shot. My God, there's a 57 Chevy. Yes, sir. What do you have to do for it? Play the machine. I'll see you later. This is the one. This is the one. I can feel it. You put in more than three coins. Oh, God. Congratulations. I rest my case. Woohoo! Gotta be lucky, boy. <laughs> well, wait, long may it continue. Take I should come back. I'll run, come huh? back later and get the car. Yes, sir. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> the car is valued at. Uh, $38,000. Like I said, the right. car was won and the lady elected to take the money. You took the cash instead. Took the cash instead. Oh, wow. 90% of visitors leave as losers, so I decided to get some advice from gambling authority Howard Schwartz. How much would you say the average guy brought to the office? I would say the average person brings or spends somewhere between three and five hundred dollars for a three day stay. Yeah. That is his recreational money. Here's your week's sure. salary or something right. like that. Some of them apportion it correctly by working them different sessions. The yeah. foolish betters blow it all the first night or the Do first they? few hours. Yeah. Had one customer won eight hundred thousand dollars in a three day period down at Finian's. The man is eighty two years old. He took a social security check and sure. ran it up to one night three hundred thousand and came back and won another five hundred thousand wow. dollars. But within three days, he, pardon the expression, pissed it all the way back at the tables. Really? Because he's a crap's degenerate. <laughs> crap's degenerate. Crap's degenerate. There are I people who have been waiting for these moments when the angel sits on your shoulder yeah. to give you that moment that you wait for for forty years of life. Yeah. And then you have to know when the angel leaves your shoulder or the little bird of luck. Right. Quit. So um, you you studied all these methods. Do you gamble yourself? I bet sports a little bit. Yeah. I will play poker on occasion, and I will yeah. bet major horse races only. I'm what yeah. you call the true recreational gambler. Right. Because I know the control you have to maintain in this town. Yeah. It'd be like a diabetic working in a candy store. <laughs> you must control yourself. Sometimes I will then again I think I won't. Sometimes I will then again I think I won't. Sometimes I do then again I think I don't. Well, it looked to 
me watching to my surprise I was dancing with a woman that was twice my size Reeling and rocking We was reeling and rocking way till the break of dawn Yeah Thank you very much, sir. Well, thanks for pleasure. looking after me. God you have bless. a good day. Thank you. Drive safely, sir. Will do. Oh, did you miss me, darling? Are we going to behave today? Are we going to not clog our carburetor? No, we're not. Good girl. It's been very embarrassing. I don't have enough in my pocket to pay the guy a tip. He said, give me a tip. I said, don't take any wooden nickels. He didn't think it was at all funny. Burn, baby, burn. Another day, another state. Off back into the desert, our intrepid hero flies. Farewell, Lego Hotel. <laughs> it's a curious thing about Vegas that it shimmers in the middle of all the darkness, just exactly the way you imagine a mirage would. And then during the day, it looks like Butlin's after a hurricane. No, oh, please, after you. I must say, I'm very glad I'm driving this. You'd feel an absolute arsehole in a fiesta here. I was just thinking, this is exactly how Frank Sinatra would have arrived here in about 1951 with Ava Gardner by his side. Come fly with me. You know, it's all that. If you look over there, you can see the mountains. It's like a, a Klondike town. There's absolutely no reason for this place to be here. The only reason this place is here is because it occurred to someone they could make lots of money. And that's exactly what they did. Including mine, which I really resent. driving through here when you realize it's just dust, literally just dust, nothing else for miles and miles and miles. And yet there's abundance, an abundance of these Joshua trees which are protected species here, those little spiny things. It just makes you realize that the life force is uh, pretty well irresistible. Yeah. And you got a problem. Right. Uh, 
the thing is we're not going to find a rebuild for a six volter. A friend of mine's got some uh, old Cadillacs and I know he's got like 241s over there. I wonder if they're by chance would be... Uh... Might well be the same. Okay. I'm going to go give him a call. and making up for lost time, I was headed for Salt Lake City in Utah, center of the Mormon church, and set on the edge of hundreds of miles of salt flats. Not the kind of salt you put in your chips, by the way, because frankly, it's a bit whiffy. The only people who feel at home here now are the military who use the area for testing, and those wild and crazy racers who break land speed records in rocket-powered cars. It is extraordinary, in a place like this, you just, you can see the covered wagons, and they came across here clattering across in their wagons without any springs, maybe dragging a few cows behind them which they would slaughter on the way to eat. And some people, believe it or not, actually stopped here. I can't really imagine it. A lot of English people, a lot of Scottish people came here. Marjorie, what do you think? Will we stop here? Alistair, it's wonderful! There's not a blade of grass. <laughs> There's nothing to do. It's the perfect place to bring up the children. It is stunningly beautiful though. Not a lot happening though. I think I might get a bad review in the quality press. Whilst it might be some people's idea of ideal television to watch the rather enormous mystical train drive an old banger across the salt flats, I find myself getting up to make a cup of tea after only 10 minutes. It all seems so very far away. I spy with my little eye something beginning with S. Uh, salt. Darn. <laughs> Next week on Coltrane and a Cadillac, I knock on the Mormon's door in Salt Lake City, and it's just another day in Dodge. <laughs>